Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm Bramble Gaming, the home of the gaming. And before we start, let me quickly remind y'all about the rules for this ranking system. Bosses with rematches in Super Mario 3D World will only have their hardest battles ranked, as most of the boss rematches in this game barely change anything about the battle. Also, what game would y'all like to see cover next in the boss ranking series? Make sure to let me know which game you'd like to see by commenting down below. Oh, and real quick, I do want to say that only 6% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. That's an incredibly small percentage, so if you enjoy these boss rankings, please do subscribe. It would help y'all not miss any of the future boss rankings that I do, and you can unsubscribe at any time if you change your mind. Anyways, with all that said y'all, let's jump right into the ranking. Oh no, it's Pom Pom. Oh golly geez, she's creating copies of herself. Gosh, if only there was a super obvious way I could tell which one of her is the real one. Oh wait, was that it? Alright, cool. At number 8 on our list, it's weird to say that Boom Boom is actually harder than any other boss in Super Mario 3D World, but it's true. The fight against the Madline himself only has the tiniest difference in difficulty from Pom Pom's fight, but at the end of the day, his battle somehow ends up being the harder one. Once you jump on Boom Boom's head for the first time, he'll turn into a shell and bounce around the room for about 8 seconds. Super easy to dodge. After the second time you damage him, he'll do the same thing again, but this time his shell will turn invisible. Oh no! Except that it's not really invisible since you can easily see the reflections of light off of it and dodge accordingly. Then, after the third time you damage him, he dies. Easy as pie. When people tell you that some of the enemies in Super Mario 3D World are more difficult to beat than the Boom Boom boss fight, they aren't kidding. His battle is horrendously easy to win, and the only thing easier than his fight is the boss battle with Pom Pom. Kinkathunk sat on a wall. Kinkathunk had a great fall. This boss is also insanely simple. I don't know what to even say about him because his fight is just that easy. Kinkathunk falls down. You jump on his X. He comes back. He falls down again. You jump on his X. He comes back again. He falls down yet again. And you jump on his X. And then you win. That is genuinely the whole entire <laughs> boss fight. It's a complete joke. And how is this fight harder than the ones with Boom Boom and Pom Pom, you might ask? Well, probably because if you're not paying any attention, you might fall off the arena. Maybe. That's about it, though. In case you haven't already noticed a trend here, most of the boss fights in Super Mario 3D World are genuinely some of the easiest bosses in the entire Mario franchise. Here with Prince Bully, you just need to bonk his big head into a clear pipe and then kick him three times in total in order to beat him. Now if you don't bonk his head fast enough when he recovers from being kicked, then you might take one hit of damage from the fireballs that he'll spit out at close range. I'm pretty sure that's his only attack for the fight though, so if you can avoid that by either waiting it out or hitting him before he can spit out the fireballs, then you'll be A-OK. -okay. It's that simple. Just like all the others so far, Prince Bully is a very, very easy boss to defeat. Alright, so now we're finally getting into the portion of this ranking where the bosses from here on out will at least have some small recognizable portion of challenge to them, even if most of them are still easy to beat. In the fight against King and Queen Histocrat, you'll need to get a super bell to climb up onto the plates on the snakes that rise up out of the sand and use these higher platforms to jump on the Histocrats' heads. These snakes that rise up out of the ground will sometimes also have cracked plates, which will break one second after the player lands on top of them. After the break, the snakes will bite upwards, damaging the player if they are still on top. Meanwhile, King and Queen Histocrat will spew fire meteors onto the arena whenever they come out out of the sand after taking damage, which creates fire pools on the ground for a bit of time. Thankfully, these fire pools are small enough to where they honestly aren't that much of an issue. 
What the main issues are for this fight are climbing the snakes in a timely manner before they disappear, as well as not messing up the jumps onto the Hisocrats' heads. But because of the infinite supply of super bells in this battle, there's a very, very low chance that you'll actually die here. Because if you take damage, you can just get another super bell. As a result of that, the Histocrat boss battle is more of a minor frustration than an actually difficult fight. Motley Boss Blob, while not the hardest boss in this game, definitely has the most unique design and battle when compared to the others. You won't be able to damage Motley Boss Blob for most of his fight, as he'll spend the majority of it as an invincible giant stomping around the arena towards the player. Every time Motley hits the ground in this form, he'll spawn in a pink shockwave that will quickly spread across the arena. Thankfully, the stomps and the shockwaves can easily be dodged by running around the arena in a giant circle and jumping when there's a large enough gap in between the shockwaves. After he stomps the ground a certain number of times, Motley's invincible form will break up into blobs on the ground, leaving him completely open to attack. This form change also spawns in a double cherry, which will help the fight become even easier as it goes on. After taking a hit of damage, Motley will go back into his giant form and the fight continues from there. While yes, the number of times that he stomps the ground before he breaks grows higher as the fight goes on, his attacks are quite easy to avoid. It's just a simple pattern of jumping over shockwaves and then jumping on the boss's head when he drops out of his giant form, and that's really all there is to it. It's a shame that Motley's rematch wasn't made that much harder in the boss rush level, because I feel like his absolutely amazing design got wasted on a fairly simple boss. Ah oh well, at least the battle is still quite a cool one despite how easy it is to win. Coming in at number 3, the rematch against the Brawler boss in World 7 isn't hard to beat. What a surprise! However, it can be a bit of a roadblock for newer and inexperienced players. When the boss fight starts, the giant Brawler will spawn three smaller Brawlers to roll towards the player while Splorches spawn in to the sides of the arena and follow suit. At this point, the player just needs to jump on a Brawler, pick it up, and throw it at the boss to get a hit of damage in. Once that happens, the boss will start to spin and throw meteors randomly onto the battlefield. This attack, combined with the Splorches rolling around, can be somewhat difficult to dodge at times and is legit the only reason why the Brawler boss got placed to this high on the ranking. Since the meteors from the Brawler boss will be thrown in a completely random pattern, it can be hard to know where to go to avoid them as well as the splorches at the same time. Luckily, the shadows can easily give away where the meteors will land, so if you're paying attention to those, you should be absolutely fine. After he throws these meteors for a while, the boss Brawler will briefly roll himself toward the player and then spawn in three more smaller Brawlers yet again. All you need to do is hit him with two more of these rock enemies, and the boss's dreams of crushing you will be blown to smithereens. The Brawler boss is definitely harder than almost every other boss in this game but his fight is still considerably easy. If you go into it with a power-up better than a Super Mushroom, then you'll almost certainly have no problems at all with winning the battle. That's right, it's Meowzer! Get it? Get it? It's funny because instead of Bowser, he's called Meowzer, cause now he's a cat, and cats say meow. Hilarious! What I don't understand though, is that dogs typically say bow wow, right? So is the normal form of Bowser actually a dog? Who knows? Maybe it is. <laughs> The final boss fight against Meowser in World 8 is more like a chase sequence than an actual fight, which makes it quite easy for a final boss. As you climb a tower full of cloud platforms and clear pipes, Meowser will continuously climb up the wall and fall back down, destroying some of the platforms with him. You won't be able to damage Meowser until you get to the top of this section, where he'll land on top of a POW block and spew down a line of fire. Hitting the POW block once will knock him up into the air and start the second part of the battle, where after the player continues through a glass pipe, Meowser will come back and start using double cherries, creating copies of himself to aid in the fight. Now, you're put up against another tower of platforms, and Meowser will continue to climb up and fall down the tower trying to get in your way. On top of this, he'll often break the wall of the tower and attempt to swipe or hit the player. The thing about all of this is that these attacks are very, very predictable. It's quite easy to see where Bowser is going to break the wall way before he actually does, thanks to the cracks in the exact spots where he comes out. 
Plus, by just staying near the top of the camera as it moves up the level, you can easily avoid all these attacks and only have to focus on the platforming. By just doing all of that, this chase fight event becomes extremely simple to overcome especially since the difficulty of the platforming doesn't rise much at all. And when you finally get to the tippy top of the tower, Meowser will yet again stand on top of a power block which you only need to hit 4 times in a row to instantly kill him and win the battle. While the Meowser fight is very cinematic, and while it's very cool to see Bowser use the same power ups that the player's been using throughout the game, the final boss is still, you guessed it, easy. It genuinely is. Even when put up against the final bosses in other 3D Mario games, this one pales in comparison to difficulty. And what's even funnier is that even though this is the last Bowser fight in this game, it's actually not the hardest Bowser fight here. An earlier boss battle with Bowser is actually harder to win than this one, and in my opinion, the hardest boss in this game. But then again, let's be real, that's not saying much. And finally, at number 1 on this list, we have the castle boss fight in World 7, Bowser in a car. This battle is way harder than all the other boss fights on this list, as not only does Bowser take 9 hits to defeat instead of just 3, but the traps and hazards in your path can really pack a punch if you don't know when to expect them. Here, Bowser will be standing on top of his extremely snazzy ride, shooting fireballs down to the ground and throwing lit soccer bombs toward the player. As Bowser continues to dish out these attacks, the path that the player runs on will start becoming littered with spike traps in certain patterns. This really starts to limit where you can run or jump without taking damage, as the spike traps combined with the fireballs can cover a significant amount of the ground. Bowser's car will also unexpectedly jump over gaps in the bridge, causing lava geysers to rise up temporarily blocking the player's path. It's sometimes easy not to expect these geysers to shoot up, causing the player to accidentally run into them as a result. So, the way you can damage this boss is by kicking the white soccer bombs back at his car, as trying to kick the red ones will only damage you instead. Successfully doing this will deal one hit of damage to Bowser's car. From there on you need to do it two more times to get him to the next phase, and nine times in total to win the battle. Because of how many times you need to kick the soccer bombs towards Bowser's car, the fight can last for a very long time, and the longer it goes on, the more chance you have as a player to make a mistake. Now, granted, if you have the Super Bell power-up equipped, you can bat the bombs upwards so that they hit Bowser instead of his car, which will deal 3 hits of damage instead of just 1. That advantage you get for having the cat suit ends up making this fight not that hard, but if you lose the Super Bell from taking 1 hit of damage during the fight, then the difficulty ramps up a lot from there on. While it's nowhere near the difficulty of some of the harder levels in this game, I'd say that Bowser in a car is a moderately difficult boss. Because of his high health and the deadly traps and falls on the path of the fight, it's definitely one that can actually kill the player if they're inexperienced with it. And because of that, I find it to be overall the hardest boss fight in Super Mario 3D World. Oh and real quick, I do want to say that I am loving the variety that we're getting with the Bowser fights in 3D Mario games. I mean, in Sunshine we had Bowser in a bathtub, in the 3D world we have Bowser in a convertible, which is pretty dang cool, you know? Gotta say, I'm really looking forward to where Nintendo will put Bowser in the next 3D game. Like maybe it will get a fight against Bowser in a helicopter, or Bowser in a submarine, or maybe even Bowser in a giant bowl of soup. Now I would love to see that become a reality. <laughs> Anyways y'all, that was all the bosses in Super Mario 3D World ranked from easiest to slightly less easy. Did you enjoy the video? If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of the other boss ranks that I did on other Mario games, like Odyssey and Sunshine. I think you'll like them. Anyways, with all that said, I'll see y'all in the next video. Brambo Gaming, over and out.